Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. Guys, for those of you that watched the first video on this, you'll know that we picked this Fiat 500 up with an electrical gremlin and it has been sat for about a year. So the brakes are a bit bindy and it is overdue a service. So I want to thank today's sponsor for sponsoring this video, which is Comline. Guys, for those of you that don't know who Comline are, they are affordable quality parts that you can pick up from your local motor factors. They supply the motor factors, the motor factors supply us public. So today we're going to be fitting new front brake discs and pads. Very, very important, the cabin filter. You would have seen in the last video when we changed one of those, it was covered in grime and that does protect the occupants inside the car with clean air. We'll also be fitting an air filter, oil filter and oil on the car as well, in the car rather. So guys, check out Comline, the links are in the description. Quite often on their Facebook and Instagram, on their socials, they do giveaways. And only in the last video, they did a giveaway of three sets of service kits for our subscribers. And I know that three of you reached out to me and told me that you'd won the service kit for your car. So don't forget, head over to their socials, check them out, follow them on there, and look out for any upcoming competitions. Let's get on with today's video. Guys, the little Fiat 500, such a lovely car with that electrical gremlin in the back. In the last video, we did quite a lot of work on the front, taking out that tow hitch for the motorhome and putting in the proper reinforcing bar and lower bar. So this one, it's not lots of work to do, but there is a serious issue with it. And we've established that somebody has tried to change the boot button They've also tried to change the boot latch. We've also found an ECU in there, which is roof ECU. Ah, yeah. oh, also, yes, roof doesn't open, boot doesn't open. The only way you can open the boot is with the emergency release, which is on the latch yes, inside. Yeah. yeah, you have to push the emergency latch there. So, two of us can't be inside the car and it is quite small, dear little tiny thing. So, I'm not sure what way around we're gonna put these out, but in some order, you're either watching this first or you're watching that first. I'm gonna carry on with that and you're gonna have a go at doing this, mate, right? I'm gonna take I'm gonna come out. close so people can hear. Yeah, I'm gonna take the switch out. Yeah. I'm gonna take the latch out. Because yeah. we have got a spare switch that they've obviously swapped over. I so think that's the original. Yeah, yeah, so we want to establish that the one they've replaced it with is actually working. A good one, yeah. And also establish that. So I'll take them out. Wire them up on the bench to a battery. Get that all tested. Make sure it all works. Well, as soon as you have done that, people will find that interesting. Can we do a bit of video yeah, of you doing yeah, that on the bench? That. I'll set, I'm going to do that first. All right, well, I'll let you get that stripped out and then we'll cut yeah. back in and have a look. Right. Let's do it. I'm messing about there, guys. I've hardly even undone a bolt on the job I'm doing. Yeah, come off quick, don't you? <laughs> they do come yeah. off quick. So the original one you did just test. I've just tested that. Micro switch, toast. Micro switch, toast. Very, very common fault on these. And that does kind of... That there, it does show that it's, 20, 20. it's new, and yeah. there was a box in there for it as well, yeah. wouldn't it? So you've wired up the micro switch to the original boot latch. As it would be on the car, yeah. It picks up an earth from the number plate light. Right. So the switch, the little micro switch that's inside there. Which is that, yeah. Yeah. All that does, there's no power to that. It just makes and breaks the earth right. to okay. the latch. Okay. The latch has a permanent power feed. Right, okay. With a permanent when the car is unlocked. Uh -huh. When the car's locked, the power feed drops out. Okay. So I've, back, I've connected the latch to the battery, yep. and then the earth to the latch, which is through that, that multi-plug, yep. which again is through that. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, you've done it. Like that. Perfect. So both of those, but. You know that the switch is fine, you know that the latch is fine. What is this? That was the one that was in the boot. Yeah, this is a second hand latch because it's got 500 written on it. So someone's bought that from a breaker's yard, haven't they? Or online, whatever. Might as well just try it. Well, yeah, definitely. I bet it ain't broke though. I've never changed, no. No. I've never changed one of them. No. So it so was the button. The original fault was the button, but I have quickly just checked the, uh, the power. Yeah. And there's no power to the boot now. There's no power at all. No, there's no power to the boot latch. Right, because the number plate lights were working. Yeah, so someone has inadvertently, I would imagine, tried to chase the fault yeah. and created another fault. Another fault, right. So we've got to go back and now and find 
in the loom. I know it's a couple of places in the loom. It's been attacked, it's attacked with in. a standing knife. So someone's had a meter on it. Right. So somewhere they've either chopped through it or they've disconnected it further up the car. Right. Because we've got no power there. Okay. So let's put I'll, this back together. We've established that works. There's no problem with any of that. So, so it can all, all that, be bolted back on. Yeah. It's, right. it's either loom or fuse box or something else. BCM, anything, yeah. yeah. But all I'm right. guessing that the original fault was just that. Micro switch, and they've delved in without looking at that. Before they've changed that. And created, created another, another problem. problem. Then right. replaced that. Yeah, we get to the bottom of it, mate. Well, I'm, you will, I'm sure. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll let you continue on and I'll carry on. So quite a lot of work there, guys. Chris, you've had to remove the seat belt, the B pillar cover. Seat the, swab. The seat swab, so the base of the back yeah, seat. Seat belts. You haven't found much money, have you? 12p. There's another two down there. Oh, I haven't included that. So you've only got, there's no coffee today. But, so, you're trying to find that main plug. Well, and hopefully the internet and you can buy a boot loom. Complete loom. That plugs in behind there somewhere. Whether the C is different. So there's you. There's only one way to find that, isn't there? There is. So you're trying to find that joiner plug. And you're going to see if there's live on the right side of yeah. that plug. Yeah. Right, okay. I'm going to let Chris crack on in here, and we can't get a camera in here. They are a little really? yogurt pot, aren't they? Tiny yeah. little thing, but so far, so good. He seems to be getting... He's now at the point, he did say a minute ago, where he is past what anybody else has got at. Yeah. So you've got to there, and that's where they got to, and they sure. messed around with it. Yeah. But also, so now behind there, nobody's been there. What I was going to say was, what we was going to say, those wires I said at first... In the first video, they looked like they'd been messed around with and someone had cut them and joined them. But what we're actually thinking is that could possibly be where the join was for the tow along for the actual motorhome yeah, because it's so only it's rear. The remains of scotch locks on some of them. That's right. So scotch locks. And that, and when you're towing behind a motorhome, it's just number plate lights, rear lights, brake lights. Yeah. It doesn't, and the indicators, it doesn't use anything else. So... Chris will get to the bottom of this. We got faith in you, mate. We know you will. A lot of work there, guys. So, Chris has literally chased. Uh, talk us through it, mate. Sorry. We didn't quite work how I thought it did on the bench. Right. So, when you operate that micro switch, yeah. it actually earths a wire all the way back to the BCM. Yeah. And then there's obviously some kind of relay in there or solid state relay, yeah. which then energises uh -huh. that permanent or that wire i thought was permanent back to the switch right. so when you might that that is a back to front way of doing it really but i guess it's so they don't have to have power up to a switch right um so, so yeah basically check the wiring out and the, the the wire down and when you operated it for me and i had the meter on it we're getting the earth down to the bcm and then we're getting the power back so all i've done let's unplug that again was clean them terminals up, plug that back in, and show us what results. I've done no got. more than that, other than testing it and cleaning it. Show us what you got. And That's it. guys, That's it. the man's fixed it. And show us what. Show us what else started working. What are you doing? Got it. Still roll with that, Chris. Soft top? Yeah. Same plug, dirty terminal. Yeah. Do you know what? Shall I leave that down so that when you're putting it back together, you've probably got a bit more room in there, but... You can do I mean, that all wants a clean up. That does want really... I don't know how far to go with it. It's a 11 reg car, but he sold that, guys. Got the boot working, got the roof working. We're pretty much... There ain't a lot left to do to this, is there now? Just sort the front bumper Sort out. the front bumper out and a whole lot of stuff to put back together in there. Yeah. I mean, let's pull that forward. You've literally had to strip out a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. But problem solved. Yeah. Nice one, mate. All right, mate. So that's all of the electrical problems now solved on the car, guys. It is purely down to 
going to be doing the service kit on it. So we're going to get those Comline front brake discs and pads fitted first, and then we can lower it down, let it get really warm, and, or, and then drain the oil out, change the filter, and move on and do the other filters as well. So no messing about. Let's crack straight on with it and get it done, because this car doesn't have any MOT either, and I can't wait to see what it actually look like, looks like once it's cleaned up. So the little red roofs on these, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I remember from the last video, actually, quite a lot of people said they didn't like it, but they do look really smart. And you can see how dirty that is. They actually clean up really, really nice, as does all of this cream in here. Once you do get it cleaned and get rid of all that dirt that's on there, they really do look quite smart. I also know quite a lot of people notice these dents. This is quite thin and flimsy. They do go like that, quite a lot of them. So I think it's probably cheap to go and grab one of those down at the breakers. We'll probably change that airbag as well. So let's crack straight on. And that is it guys, it's so simple to do brake discs and pads. And I genuinely would recommend that pretty much anybody can do it. If you're doing it for the first time, obviously you need to take a bit of extra time and make sure that you do do it properly. So you just remove the caliper, which is 213 mils. I use the wind back tool just to push the piston back. Obviously make sure the cap is off your reservoir because it is gonna push the fluid up. You've got these two what are they there, at, uh, 11 mils, you undo those, undo the carrier, there's two 17s on the back, take the carrier out of the way, fit the new disc, do these 11s back up, obviously cleaning everything up as you go in as well, wire brush you would have seen, I unlo unloaded quite a lot of brake cleaner on there just to get everything out and then you do get a lot of excess like brake dust come off when you do use the brake cleaner on there. So it's exactly the same the other side. I'm not going to film doing it twice, but I'm going to move on, get the other side done, and then we can move on to the service items. That's both sides finished, guys. So driver's side all done. And passenger side, little tiny bit different because you have got this wear sensor, but very straightforward. The new one just clips in. It's already connected to the brake pad. And then you've got one little plug there where you just plug in. It is one wire. And basically, once it gets down to that wear sensor, it, it triggers it and lets you know that your brake pads are really low. So just got to clean that disc up, put the wheels back on it, and then we're going to get it right up to temperature, get some heat in it, and then actually drain all the oil out. It is always best to get the engine warm, fins the oil down, and then you get a little bit more out of it. So got the drain tray ready there to go. Let's get on and get that done as well. Moving along very, very nicely and fast today, which is quite nice. Everything seems to be going to plan. Let's get on. So that's front brake discs, pads done guys, air filter, oil filter, oil. All of the engine side of it, the service, is actually done. But moving on to the last bit, and I know I always say how important it is, the cabin filter. So here's the new one, and this was a nightmare. They are a nightmare to get out on these. You can see, I'm just about to pull it out there. And you can see at the back there, that little tiny hole that it goes in, and it has this cover over it. And you can see there's actually a couple of bolt holes in that as well. And on quite a lot of cars, they are held in with like little 5.5 mils. I've had to undo a 5.5 on the bracket that actually sits over the top of this. Let's find that little bracket. Where is it? There. So there's a little bracket here. 
sorry guys, I know it's a bit hard to show, but that actually sits over the top of it, which holds it in. But you can see, that's never actually had any bolts in it. And I don't actually think as well, look at the state of that. I don't think this has ever been changed. That is exactly the same filter and same color. And look at the difference. It's incredible. So this is certainly gonna smell a lot better when you've got the heat and all the air conditioning on. But I am gonna just quickly blow that out in there just to make sure there's no loose debris in there before I go ahead and fit the new one in. And before I fit all this panel in, even though it's gonna need a clean, it's a good chance to actually vacuum up behind here because you can't actually get to here once all that plastic's back in. So moving along, but I would say that that's took more time stripping that out to change that pollen filter than it did to do an oil and filter. It's that tight and awkward to do. Let's move on. So as you can see guys, all now fitted back on, the little brackets back on, the wires clipped onto it and the wire plugged back in. And I also just went around them edges there with the vacuum before I go ahead and put that cover on. Let's do it. Not something that I normally do guys. I'm going to take this and get it cleaned, but it is quite bad underneath here. It could do with a little blow off with a jet wash. So I am just going to go around, give this a quick blow off. I'm not going to uh, film it because you're just going to see me filming this so you can see what it's like now and then obviously we'll have a little look after and I noticed when I just jumped in it to move it all of that on the back of the wiper blade so I need to give these a good wash anyway before it goes for an MOT it all wants to be really nice and presentable so I'll get that cleaned and then we'll have another look at it once it is done and there you go like I said I didn't want to go mad I just wanted to blow all of that dust off all of the dirt that was up here in all of these corners, you can see actually where I've blown it that way and that way, some of it's still in there, but all the chassis legs, just clean all them up, heat shield, all the fan here, just everything's all nice and a lot more presentable when you open the bonnet. And of course I took all that green off around the edges there and done the wiper blades as well. So let's whip it out the car wash, get it valeted before we take it for an MOT. There we go guys, all cleaned up, nice new MOT on it, and it didn't even have any advisories. It is a really, really nice car. The front bumper, <clears throat> we know it's got a few marks around it, it's 2011, but what we wanna do really is keep it affordable. This is gonna be a right little bargain for someone. I've looked at the prices, and this is gonna be a bargain. So we put the new grill in there, and Chris just touched up that front bumper, and that's gonna be fine. If we took this down the paint shop and started having the front bumper painted, we've then got to add another 300 pound, 250 to the price. And it's really, really not required. It's absolutely fine like that. It all cleaned up very nice down at the car wash. It is quite windy out here, guys, so we get, might get a bit of wind noise. It's definitely had some paint before. There is a slight difference. All the back of it you see the roof come up really nice i did say they do look nice when they're clean and then inside all of this cream it all did come up nice well, i've got the airbag i need to swap that over just somebody's been pushing that and put all those dents in it but yeah very very nice tidy presentable little convertible car ideal for a young girl's first car. It's a cracking little car, that one, guys. And like I said, very, very cheap. I am going to wing it this time. Chris is in the background. He just said, do you want me to do the numbers? And I said, no, nope, I'm going to wing it and do it from what I remember. And if there is anything else, Chris will shout out in the background. So first of all, guys, don't forget, follow Comline on their Facebook page for those competitions. Three of you already won. So little Fiat 500. Chris, please do shout if I get any of this wrong. We paid a thousand pound for that car. Yeah. We did, didn't we? 
So it was a thousand pound and it had this serious electrical gremlin. And it actually turned out to be a bit more than a serious gremlin because the front bumper bar was toast and the lower bumper bar was broke, obviously bent. And the lower grille, we haven't had to buy any other parts for it. So have we? Condenser. Oh, Air Comrade. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should have written this down, but you're good at maths. Battery. And a battery, yeah. This, this is, and an air, this is why, really, Chris just offered to write it down and I said no, but he's gonna do the math while I'm telling you, and then he'll tell me a final figure, I'm sure. So we paid a thousand pound for that car. And as you know, we got a fantastic relationship with Silver Lake. And we said, when you're around in that area and you've got space on the truck, could you grab it, store it at your yard, and then when you've got a lorry coming down here because they collect from the southeast, could you drop it off one morning? And he said, yeah, that's absolutely fine. And they never actually charged us guys, but we really, really do want to give back to them for doing that for us. It is a one-off. It's not something that we can keep asking them to do. So we just said, we get a pallet, we get a few, probably spend 50, 60 quid on some beers, wrap them up and post them up to them because that was really nice. And of course, it has saved us a few quid. So our battery ran Kent Auto Salvage was £20. The front grille, Eddie saved the day again and actually give us that. I'm saying about pricing it up, he gave us that grille. Uh, air condenser rad was, I bought the air comrade front upper bar and lower bar for £80. What other bits did you just say? MOT was £40, Valet was £20. Airbag. Airbag £40. And that is all we've spent on that car, isn't it? So, guys, I'll let you do the maths, but how much? 1200. 1200. We was, when we first got that car, I think we both agreed, because of the price of cars at the minute, and a lot of you always say, you sell them cars way too cheap. We thought, well, there's, there's one very, very similar in the paper now for three and a half. And I said to Chris, that's way too dear, but three grand? I thought that'd be a nice car for three grand, but we decided after washing it, it's got a couple of different shades on it. It's got that little chip in the front. We're actually gonna ask two and a half for it. So we're gonna be doubling our money. So it was definitely, definitely worth doing. I know a lot of you said, oh, another Fiat 500, Rob, you said you'd never do one, but this was a Fiat 500C, little convertible, and it turned out and it paid off. So that is gonna be the end of today's video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Drop us a comment in the comment section. And don't forget, if you want any merchandise delivered by Christmas, it has to be ordered by the 18th of December. And use the discount code 10 on checkout to get 10% off of anything you want from the merch store. Is there anything else to add in this? There's not, is there? That is pretty much it. Yeah, and that's Comline for the bits. Oh, thanks, Comline for the bits, yeah, and the sponsorship. So that's pretty much done. I took that car to MOT and drove it home. It was fine, but I will just drive it for another couple of days just to make sure that everything's working and there's no issues with it. We haven't driven it at night, and you do want to check things like that, the lights at night, just to make sure there's no flickering or problems. So as soon as that one is ready, I will chuck it on Instagram for sale. And if you're interested, reach out on Instagram once it is for sale and include your phone number. Like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you all next week in the next one.